Biden sent Kamala to Europe to stop the war in Ukraine. She met with Putin, and then three days later, he attacked. How did she do? You think she did a good job? She met with Putin to tell him, don't do it. And three days later, he attacked. That's when the attack started. Did you know that, General? Should have sent you. But over a half a million, they say, are dead or wounded, but it's a much higher number than that. Donald Trump and the wider MAGA movement have never let facts get in the way of a good story. You know, what is wild to me is that this word patriot seems to be um, getting co-opt for propagandaist, because that's what they do, all right? So we're going to talk about what my colleague um, from Georgia, she talked about misinformation and I, I don't know what she was talking about, but nevertheless, we can look at her own tweets and we can find plenty of misinformation, but we're just gonna go through one specific tweet. Now, she said that we need to work with Israel to track down the serial numbers on any US weapons used by Hamas against Israel. Dr. Snyder, I, I may be going out on a limb, but are you aware that that was actually just propaganda that was put out and there actually were not U.S. weapons that were being used by Hamas as she attempted to uh, insinuate in this tweet? Um, the uh, Yes. I mean, obviously there what you have is a typical example of American Russian messaging where the implicit idea is supposed to be we shouldn't give weapons to Ukraine because they're going to end up going somewhere else. There's no evidence for that. It's hard to think of an example where American weapons have been leveraged with such success as on the Ukrainian battlefield. Thank you so much. In fact, for some people, especially people that serve on the committee, they may be surprised to know that it's actually a former Russian president and Putin's sidekick, Dmitry, and I don't want to slaughter his name, so I'm going to say Dmitry M., who actually she quote tweeted. See, the problem that we're having and the reason that we're bringing up Russia as well is because Russia is a threat as well as China. So we are not going to sit here and pretend as if it's only one or the other. But the biggest problem that we have is we have people that sit in this chamber and they spread the misinformation. If it was left in Russia or China, whatever. But the problem is that you have people that sit in positions of power and they 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 have a $2 million budget. You think that they would call on some staff to find out if they were telling the truth about the things that they're putting on social media, but instead it works for their rhetoric. And as we talk about rhetoric, something else that was appalling to me was this insinuation that when you look at the Ukrainians, which is why we're having problems getting the funding that Ukraine needs, is because people in this chamber push misinformation and disinformation, they want to talk about the Ukrainians got all of these Nazis. Well, let me tell you something. You can find Nazis anywhere. You can find them right here in the United States. In fact, a bunch of the people that they're calling um, victims and prisoners of war, also known as convicted felons from January 6th, I have an article that I'd like to enter into the record by unanimous consent that says, Neo-Nazi January 6th rioter pleads guilty. Without objection. Thank you so much. So here's the point. We have people in this chamber that are actually causing just as much a threat, if not more of a threat, to our own country. We should be talking about holding our very own accountable for the misinformation and disinformation that they are spreading, whether it's coming out of China, whether it's coming out of Russia, or whoever is peddling it, it is a problem. Because right now what we see is that people are dying and we cannot get the support that we need from the public because they continue to peddle lies. And I'm tired of it because I didn't come to this chamber to play games. I came to this chamber to answer to the people, the American people, and to make sure that we keep the American people safe. And if we don't get something done as they talk about the border, I do want to be clear, the only reason we haven't gotten funding for the border is because they killed, the House Republicans here killed the bill that they actually sent us from the Senate side. If they want to do some work, let me tell you something. The Democrats are ready, and it seems like the Senate Republicans are ready too. They just need to get to it and stop peddling Putin's lies. Thank you, and I yield. While many people just accept that they're lying and assume that everyone knows that, fact checking is the only definitive way to prove that their policies are based on feelings and not facts. Remember, Bragg and Colangelo bootstrapped charges that are normally misdemeanors to some underlying crime 
to make the charges a felony. But what was the underlying crime? Prosecutors didn't reveal that until after the trial began. Mr. Colangelo, in his opening statement, accused President Trump of violating the Federal Elections Campaign Act. But the problem is, in the plain reading of that act, doesn't support the indictment or the verdict. As Commissioner Smith stated, allowing this prosecution to go forward and the ultimate jury decision threaten the enforcement procedures established by Congress under the act and stretch the meaning of the statute in such a way as to threaten due process of law. I just want to level set because I feel as if some people don't understand how government works and I don't know how they got to Congress. So, Mr. Wu, I'm going to need you to help me out because I don't know that I trust that other people will know the answers to these questions. Number one, how many branches of government do we have? Uh, three. Three. Okay, sounds good. So, can you name them for me? Legislative, judiciary, and executive. Very good. Okay, so currently, I think that I serve in the legislative branch. Would you agree? I agree. Okay, fine. Can you tell me, when somebody goes to court, such as a criminal convicted of 34 felony counts, state court in New York, um, would that be the legislative people or judicial people? Well, it's really the executive that's prosecuting and then it's within the judiciary to run the trial properly. Okay, very good. So, judiciary. So, typically, if someone has an issue with, say, what happens in court, do they then somehow hop from state court all the way to the federal legislative branch, or is there a different process in which you are supposed to be able to um, explain any issues you may have? The process would be the judicial appellate process holding aside the issue of state versus federal. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. So normally people don't get convicted on a state level and somehow end up litigating the issue on the federal level in the legislative branch. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right. So something is different about what's going on today. I just wanted to clarify because I thought I was living in the upside down for a second. Now, I want to move on and talk about how someone is prosecuted currently, because under Project 2025, we'll get there, there will be a different way to prosecute people. But currently, it is my understanding, and I only kind of went to law school, passed a couple of bar exams, and practiced on the state and federal levels, but just clarify for me, when someone goes in to be prosecuted, is it, say, the President of the United States that somehow becomes the state prosecutor in New York? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because he's the executor, huh? That's that other branch. Correct. That's the, okay, okay. All right, so you have this prosecutor, and in this case, it's Alvin Bragg, who was duly elected, correct? Correct. Not appointed by the president, correct? Right. Duly elected by the citizens in his jurisdiction, right? Right. So he's elected, and usually there's some sort of an investigation that takes place, correct? Prior to his election? No, no, no. When it, with, a, with a case, I'm sorry. Yes, I've correct. moved on. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right. So the very first part of a case is that we go through an investigation. After that investigation, then the prosecutor usually has what we would consider to be some sort of prosecutorial discretion as to whether or not they want to go forward, correct? Correct. All right. And then they use that discretion. But then when it's somebody that is facing a felony amount of time, which is usually in most states over a year, then they have to present it to a grand jury. Is that right? That's right. Now, a grand jury is comprised of citizens, correct? Correct. U.S. citizens from that area, correct? Right. Okay. So, they have to come to the conclusion that they are going to issue what we call a true bill, correct? Correct. All right. So, then we have an indictment. And then there's pretrial motions, there's pretrial hearings, all kinds of stuff, right? Right. All right. And then, ultimately, depending on where you are, you have the opportunity to say, hey, I want a jury trial, correct? Correct. And a jury trial is comprised of U.S. citizens again, right? Right. Okay, very good. All right, so can you tell me so far if all of this took place in the case in New York? Yes, it did. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so you get to trial. Now, when you show up to trial and you're facing a felony amount of time, as a defendant, are you not entitled to uh, an attorney? Yes, you are. And your attorney is allowed to pick the jury, they're allowed to present evidence, and ultimately it is a jury of your peers who decides whether or not you are guilty or not, correct? Correct. The and pick, in this the picking, case, the 30, as the judge to. And in this case, they found him guilty not once, not twice, not three times, not four, not five, not six, 
I could keep going on, but 34 counts were given. So the opinions of these people who were not juries is not what we do in this country. In this country, we have a system in which jurors decide who is found guilty. And if you have a problem with that, you go I'm, to the appellate court, I'm which the, the last lady. time I checked, he was raising money so that he could go to the appellate court and appeal his decision, and they will have the final say so. Thank you so much. Texas Representative Jasmine Crockett is an attorney who knows exactly how to pick apart an argument in a way that is devastatingly accurate and also devilishly entertaining at the same time. And MAGA just doesn't know how to cope with it, which is why we see them publicly falling apart when they're challenged. Um, I will say that um, um, the savings that CBO has identified that we've reinvested back into the Farm Bill, quite frankly, uh, do not cut during the course of this five years of this Farm Bill any individual or family SNAP benefits. Uh, there's rhetoric on the outside that is amplifying that for their own purposes, but it is just not true. You know, I have been listening to everyone that had something to say, and, and the interesting thing, if the public pays attention, is that when my Republican colleagues speak about SNAP, these are the things that I've heard. It's not a cut. It's cost neutral. Potential cuts and increase in benefits. But every time you listen to the Democrats speak, they say the exact same thing. And the information that they're relying on is called data. And the data came from the nonpartisan CBO. The only information that we have before us to make a determination of how we will proceed is data from the CBO. This is what we're supposed to rely upon. I don't know where all of these different iterations about what's going to happen is coming from, but the data says $30 billion. That's what the data says, not what the Democrats say, but what the data says says as donald trump and his minions and toadies in the house and the senate grow increasingly desperate as the election draws closer you can expect to see even more of these highly satisfying takedowns happen and i would expect that jasmine crockett is going to feature in quite a few of them uh the gentlelady yields back and the gentleman from north dakota is recognized thanks for watching our video did you know that you can support our show by becoming a subscriber? Just click the subscribe button and also ring the bell so that you get notifications when we're live or when we post new content.